Episode 7. Shalom, this is Eliyahu Mitterov with this week's Talmud podcast. We're going to be starting the third parak of Baba Metzia, Hamafkid. The Mishnah reads like this. If a man deposited with another man animals or utensils, and what happened? They were lost or they were stolen. Shilem, if he decides to pay, and he does not want to take a Shavua, what would be the Havimini that he take a Shavua? Shahari Amru, like the Chachamim say, Shomri Chinim Nishpar V'yotzi. Since he was doing a favor for his friend and he was guarding it for free, therefore, if he wants, he could take a Shavua and get out of it. He doesn't have to pay. Nimsa Ganav, what happened after that? They found the thief. Mishalem Tishlumi Kefel. And now the thief has to pay double. Any thief that is caught, he has to pay double. Or, Tavak Vomocher, if the thief already came to the level where he shechted the animal, he slaughtered the animal, or he sold the animal, Mishalem Tishlumi Arba Chamisha, he has to pay four or five times the amount. Lemil Mishalem, who does he pay it to? Lemisha Pikadon at slow. He pays it to the Shomer, because in this case, the Shomer paid, he didn't want to take a Shavua. So now he gets the future compensation. On the other hand, Nishpa, with Lord Silashilim, if he wants to take a Shavua and he doesn't want to pay, Nimsa Ganav, it's such a case where he found the thief, Mishalem Tishlumi Kefel, he has to pay double the thief, or Tavakamokher, or if he shechted it or sold it, Mishlumi Tishlumi Arba Chamisha has to pay four or five times the amount. Lemi Mishalem, in this case, who does he pay to? Labawa Pekadon, to the original owner. Since the Shomer decided to take a Shavu and putter himself, he is no longer connected with that animal at all. And therefore, in the future, if it's found and there's a kanas of double or four or five times the amount, it goes to the original owner. Since he never paid for it, the owner did not want to give him this compensation. What does Rashi say? Lord say Lishpa, he doesn't want to take a Shavuah. Shavuah Shomrim, he doesn't want to take the Shavuah of Shomrim, of guardians. Shalom Pashaba, that he wasn't negligent, but Shalom Shalak Boyad, and that he didn't touch the thing. And he really, he could have puttered himself, he could have freed himself, but he didn't want to do it. Lumisha Pikadon at slow. Next Rashi. He pays to the one who the picadon is at slow. This, why? They came with the shilam. Since the person paid, now he's going to get the future compensation. Kone tashlumum. He acquired all the future payments. Ube gemar mufarish And the gemar is going to explain the reasoning. Now, where in the Torah do we know this concept of a fine for a thief? It says in Shmos 21.37, If a man steal an ox or a sheep and kill it or sell it, he shall pay five oxen for an ox and four sheep for a sheep. That was Pasuk 37. And Pasuk 22.3 says, If the theft be found in his hand alive, whether it be an ox, an ass, or a sheep, he shall pay double. And Rashi brings down, what's the difference between four or five? Well, it depends. If it's a sheep, since he had to carry that sheep on his back and it was embarrassing, the fine is less. It's only four times. Which is not true by an ox, because we just bring the ox along. There's no embarrassment. Now, the first toast was says like this. There is an obvious question here. Tosfos says there are those that do not write the word avdu, that it was lost in the Mishnah. Why? The rest of the entire Mishnah is only speaking about who gets the fines if it was stolen. What does it have to do with if it was lost? Nothing. So there are those that take lost out of the Mishnah. In other words, if a man handed over a behema or a kelim to his friends and it was stolen, who does the fines go to? Take out the words lost. It shouldn't be there. But Tosos has two potential answers of how we can keep lost in the mission. He says, Normally, we like to read the Mishnah that these are the cases in the Mishnah, stolen or lost. He has another possibility. That's not actually the case. It's what he claimed. The Shomer claimed it was stolen or it was lost. At the end of the day, even the lost object was stolen. So the question will be, who gets the fines? In such a case, you can have fines because in the end of the day, it was stolen. So who gets them? That's one answer. 
The other answer is Inami. Ani Adim Shinignivu Mutoka Beso. We know it was stolen from the house because there's Adim, there's witnesses. Ach Eno Ani Adim Shin Pasha. The first case where it says it was stolen, we know that it was stolen because there's Adim. We just don't know whether it was stolen by negligence or not. Was his Shomer negligent or not? Or Sha'avdu, what's the other case of Avdu? We know it was lost from him. There was witnesses, the thing is gone. But we don't know if it was lost because somebody else stole it or because it was actually lost. So what happened is Tosfos changed the Peshat and the Mishnah to uh, general cases. In other words, it said it was stolen, it was lost. These are two general cases. The particulars are missing. On the side that it was stolen, we say we know it was stolen, but we don't know how, if he was negligent or not. And on the side that it was lost, we don't know how it was lost. And there's a side to say that it was lost because it was stolen. In such a case, you would have a case of fines, and therefore the rest of the Mishnah would apply. So Tosus was docking the Peshat a little bit in the Mishnah by saying it's a case of witnesses in both cases and they're general cases. What we're missing is the specific and we can still wind up with the case of stolen even though it looks like it was lost. Comes along the Tosus to rush with a third answer. He says like this, Inami, Dinaket Avdu Lashminen Di'idi Ikor Habi Yashavak Shalom. We can actually have a case of Avdu. It's true, there are no fines where the thing is lost and the guy found it, but there's something else. It, what if it went up in value? If at the time when it was lost, the Shomer said, I will pay for it, and then the thing was found two years later, three years later, and it went up in value, he is going to get that extra value. Why? Because he paid it, which is very similar to the case that if he would have paid when it was stolen and later it was found, he will get the fines. So we can keep the case of Abdu in the Mishnah. Since the case of loss also has a future payment which will wind up in the hands of the Shomer. And the Tosus Arash brings a proof from Bob Mansiya 35a that says like this. One time there was a man who deposited jewels with his neighbor. And then later he came to him and said, please give me my jewels back. And the guy says, listen, I don't know where I put them. So they went to Rav Nachman. And Rav Nachman said to them, Call lo yadinan peshiosa. Any shomer, if you give something to somebody to watch and you later yes back for it and you say, where is it? He says, I don't even know where I put it. That's called negligence. So if Nachman says he has to pay, go and pay. But he doesn't want to pay. He didn't pay. So what did Rav Nachman do? He took away his house. Later, who knows how long later, the jewels were found and they went up in value. So what did Rav Nachman say? Fine. Take the jewels, you take the jewels, and he gets his house back. So Rava happened to be sitting learning this Mishnah before Rav Nachman. And he says to him, A mafkid, someone who leaves something by another person, Vishilem, if he pays. If he pays, so he should get it. Why does the prophet go back to the original owner since it was like when he took his house, it was like he was paid. So he took his house, let him get the prophets. Let the Shomer get the profits. He paid for it with his house. But Rev Nachman didn't answer me. And he explained, it's good that Rev Nachman didn't answer me. Why? Because it's different. There, he did not go to the trouble of bringing him to court. Whereas in our case of Bob Mitzia 35, he did trouble him. There's a difference between the two cases. The case in the Mishnah, the guy just pays up front. They never have to go to court. So therefore, he gave them a kefo. He gave them the future fines. But in this case, he schlepped the guy to court. He said he had to pay. He didn't want to pay. They took away his house. It was a whole big tircha for him. So therefore, he didn't have in mind to give him the future value of the jewels that were found if he were to pay. It's only Lichachila, where he doesn't bring him to court. So we see from here, from this Gemara, there's a half a mina. It would be, if he did pay him lichachile, he would get the inflated value that the thing now has. We see it from this Gemara. So this is the third answer why it says Abdu in the Mishnah, because it could be talking about the inflated value in the future. Except because she says, Afagav, the Messiah Hacha, Nimsa Haganav, Velotana Nami, Nisyakru. Even though they continue with the Mishnah, talks about that they found the Ganav and doesn't talk at all about that the thing went up in value in a case where a thing was lost. Tanakhadimanaihu Nakat. Vapirush Bhaganeva Vuhuadin Bhaveda. 
the shvacha, the shayik badayinu yukra. He wants to explain that you could have learned one from the other. It's true that the end of the Mishnah does not speak at all about a case of a lost object. But since at the beginning it says that it was stolen or lost, and it goes on to speak about the stolen object, and we see that the kefo goes to the shomer when he pays, it would also, we would be able to learn from the case of Geneva to the case of, of Aveda, where the thing goes up in value, the shomer will also acquire that extra value. You can learn the case of a lost object from the case of a stolen object comes along the Chedush Rim and speaks on our Tosfos. Nothing to do with the case where the thing went up in value. That was the Tosfos of Rush and other Rishonim. And our Tosfos by itself, we're only talking about Geneva or Aveda, and we're talking about later on we found that the thing was stolen. So he says, according to that, you cannot learn one from the other. Why? Because if you know Lichachil, the thing was stolen, so you know there's a kefo. So what's the story? He wants to explain that the original owner says to this guy, listen, if this thing gets stolen and you pay, you would get the kefo up front. And I'm willing to give it to you because I want to motivate you to pay me. But if we either it was claimed it was lost or it was lost and later on they found it was stolen and there is kefo, but at the time of the payment, as far as everybody knows, it's lost. So he would never have in mind to give him the kefo because it's not a motivating factor. So therefore, if we knew that the original Shomer, if he paid, and when it was really stolen, everybody knew it was stolen, that he would get that kefo, it's not true that the original owner would give to the Shomer the kefo in a case where it was lost. And also the opposite. For example, let's just teach lost and we'll be able to learn stolen from it. That won't work either. Why? Because if it was lost, what's the possibility of kefo? It's true at the end of the day they found that it was stolen. But if I were to teach in the case of lost that he gets the kefo, you know why that's true? Because it's very distant. What's the possibility there's going to be kefo? As far as I'm concerned, it's lost. So I'm willing to give it to him. But in the case of Geneva, I'm not going to give this guy the, uh, the kanas. Why should I give him four or five times the amount? I'm not willing to give it to him. So even if I knew in the case of Aveda, I would not be able to learn to the case of Geneva. Because in such a case, there's a greater chance that maybe he's going to wind up with the kefo and he wants to keep it for himself. So therefore, according to Chedush Arim, you cannot learn one from the other. So we need to answer up the Rashba who said, if you know Geneva, you will know Aveda. It's different. What's different about it? If you know Geneva that he gets kefel, you will know in Aveda that he gets the increased value. The value that the object has if it goes up in value. So there we will be able to learn. Why? Because we were saying that if he thought it was lost, there's no kefil. That's true. But if you know by the case of Geneva where there is kefil, you will also know the case of increased value. Because in both cases, the value is always there. There's a possibility in the case of Geneva that he will wind up with the fine. And there's a possibility in the case of Aveda that it will go up in value. And you will be able to learn one from the other. It's not like the case where you're trying to learn Geneva, where you really know there's a Geneva and there's Kefel, and Aveda, which is later a Geneva, which you assume there is no Kefel. It's not like that. No. In both cases, there's a value, and therefore, that value will go to the Shomer. The Mara Show explains that there's really another potential answer to this question, which Tosos didn't want to say. The question again was, what is Aveda doing in the Mishnah if there's no Kefel by Aveda? How can we possibly write it in the Mishnah? He said Tosos could have brought a different case. He could have brought the case of a towing Tanis Ganov. What would be the case? Really, it was lost. That's the case. It was lost. And then later, somebody found it. And then somebody announced, okay, I found your lost object. When they came to collect it, he claimed it was stolen. Later, they caught him that he himself stole it. In such a case, the Gemara says, that also has to be careful. So why does Entosos want to bring that as an answer? The question will be, what is Aveda doing in the Mishnah? The answer is, no, it's the Aveda of a towing time is gone off, where later it's lost, the guy claims it was found, and he himself stole it. So there is a case of careful. It'd be a perfect answer. Like it says in Baba Kama 106b, Rav Chia Baraba said in the name of Rav Yochanan, a towing town is gone, it has to be careful. So why don't we say that answer? So the marshal wants to explain the Lishna de Nimsa Ganav Lo Mash Mahaki. Since the Mishnah said that the Ganav was found, it doesn't fit into the language a Nimsa Ganav. The Ganav was found. 
Why? Because we didn't find the Ganav. We knew the Ganav. This is the guy who found the object and claimed that it, he was going to give it back and later he stole it. So the Lush and Nimsa Ganav, which it says in the Mishnah, we found the Ganav, doesn't fit. And therefore the Marshal wants to explain. That's why Tosos didn't bring us an answer. He brings another reason why. Because if it was a Mephorish Mishnah, the case of a towing town is Ganav, is a Mephorish Mishnah, that he gets the Kefo. So you want to be able to have an argument because over there, in Baba Kama 106b, Rev Abba is trying to fight Rev Yochanan, but he wouldn't be able to fight Rev Yochanan if it was a Mephorish Mishnah. So that's another reason why Tosos didn't want to bring this answer. Okay, that's it for this week's podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> Lieferai mich